Hey guys, okay, so on Monday I lectured on what chromosomes are made out of, and we figured out that chromosomes are made out of DNA, or at least the uh, important genetic material in chromosomes is DNA, right? We also know uh, that what the structure of DNA is, we know that it's a double-stranded molecule, and it's in a helical shape, which means it spirals, okay? Um, this is just a simple, simple uh, representation of what a DNA molecule would look like, right? It has two strands of nucleotides. Here's one. Here's another. Um, on the outside is a backbone of sugar and phosphates. Okay, I didn't draw out the uh, chemical structure. If you want to do that, you can look online or at the slides. Uh, and in the middle are the nitrogenous bases. And we had a, that uh, the nitrogenous bases pair with each other. So adenines pair with thymines and guanines pair with cytosines, and they actually bind together with these weak hydrogen bases, or I say weak hydrogen bonds, okay? So now the next question uh, that we started talking about that we talked about on Friday um, was what does uh, what does DNA actually have to do, and how does it work? Okay, so I just wanted to go over today some of the things we talked about on Friday, um, as I know that sometimes it helps to kind of slow down and uh, kind of step through some of these things. Okay, so if we had a molecule here, right, one of the first things that one of the things that DNA has to do is it has to replicate, right? Because each time a cell undergoes division, either if it's uh, mitosis or meiosis, um, it has to first before it can divide, it has to replicate its DNA, right? You have to have, a, it, it first duplicates its DNA, so it has twice the number of chromosomes in it, okay? So how does DNA actually replicate? Well, if you take a look at um, the structure of DNA, and Watson and Crick noticed this, they didn't actually know how it replicated, they didn't know the mechanisms, um, but they figured, well, if you know that they, these these bases pair together, they bind to each other. You, if you're given half of a strand, you can figure out what that other half would be. So it makes sense that these weak hydrogen bonds might come apart, okay, so these strands separate. And if you know what one nitrogenous base is, you can figure out that it's complement, right, what its complementary strand would look like. Okay, because we know that A's and T's bind and that C's and G's bind. So if you're given half of this molecule, uh, this DNA molecule, you could fill in basically the rest of it, right? And this is basic, it's a much, com obviously there's a complicated um, mechanism behind it, uh, but uh, it basically, if you're given one half the strand, it basically fills in the other half of nitrogenous, uh, of the nucleotides, okay? So if you're given an A here, you could put in a T. If you're given a T, it binds with A's, okay? So you could just go in and fill this other side in, with its known complementary bases, right? And of course, it would have a sugar phosphate backbone, okay? So that would be its complement. You could do the same thing here. Okay, here's another half, right? You could just fill it in with the complementary bases. Okay. So, pretty straightforward. And now if you take a look at what we have here, this DNA molecule is identical to this DNA molecule. I just have them in different colors just so you know, you can see which the new strands are, right? But this, the sequence of nucleotides here is the exact same as the sequence of nucleotides here, which is the exact same as the original DNA molecule. So you can see here we start out with one DNA molecule and we end with two DNA molecules. Okay, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Okay, so this is DNA, rep uh, DNA replication in a very simple way. Um, but this is basically the process, right? The molecule splits in half and then there's a mechanism to kind of fill in uh, the other half of the strand, the other uh, complementary strand, okay? So the next question is, okay, so what else does DNA do? Well, DNA, uh, if you remember, uh, codes for proteins, okay? So we have DNA here, and we also, it eventually codes for proteins, okay? And again, proteins are long chains of amino acids, right? But the problem is that they're separated in space, right? Proteins uh, are in the side of, well, so the proteins are in the cytoplasm, right? Or are, are assembled in the cytoplasm, right? Uh, they're uh, they're assembled by these things called ribosomes. Okay, and these ribosomes are found in the cytoplasm. The problem is that DNA is not in the cytoplasm; it is in the nucleus, right? 
And it doesn't leave the nucleus because DNA um, is pretty important, right? We don't want our DNA getting, getting damaged or anything. So it's in this kind of protective uh, nucleus, okay? So it doesn't ever leave. So the problem is how do we get this message? How do we have to get the code from DNA out to the ribosomes and the cytoplasm, right? How do we get this? Okay. Well, we have an intermediary, okay? We have what's called messenger M RNA. Okay, so RNA um, is another nucleic acid, right? Ribonucleic acid instead of deoxyribonucleic acid. There's a couple differences between DNA and RNA. RNA, um, again, ribose is the sugar that's used in RNA. Deoxyribose is the sugar used in DNA. Um, it's also RNA is also single-stranded, whereas DNA is double-stranded, right? And also remember that RNA uses uracil instead of thymine. Okay, so it has a it has a different base that it uses instead of thymine. It uses uracil, right? U. Okay. All right, so what happens is instead of sending DNA out to the protein or to the cytoplasm to make proteins, we actually make this little messenger, okay? We make a strand of RNA, mRNA, messenger RNA, through, um, through a process called transcription, okay? And then we want to actually. Then when what we ha what we do is we make the RNA in the nucleus, and then that molecule gets sent out to the cytoplasm, uh, to the ribosomes, uh, which then tells it the ribosomes how to make the proteins by a process called translation. Okay, so again, uh, getting R you know, making messenger RNA from DNA is a process called transcription transcription, then we send that RNA out into the cytoplasm to the ribosomes, which then assemble proteins through a process called translation. Okay, so we're going to talk about translation in a separate video, uh, and right now we're going to kind of talk about, okay, we're going to go over transcription. So remember, RNA is single-stranded, and it also uses uracil instead of thymine. So how does it, how, how do we get mRNA from DNA? Okay, so here's our original DNA strand, right? Again, it's double-stranded, and one of the strands is uh, going to be the coding strand. So let's just say this strand is the coding strand. Okay, so the question is, how do we make this mRNA? Okay, well, it's kind of similar to DNA replication, except we're only making one strand of RNA. So what happens is the two strands separate, right? These uh, hydrogen bonds holding them together is broken, and they separate, and then if this is the coding strand, right, we can just kind of fill in what the complementary bases would be, just remembering that instead of, right, in DNA, they use thymine, and in RNA, oops, RNA, you're going to replace it with uracil. So anytime you would put a thymine in, you're going to replace it with uracil, okay? So again, T's, what does T's bind, pair with? Pairs with adenine, A. A, what does A pair with? Well, in DNA, if we're making DNA, it would pair with a T, but in RNA, it pairs with a U. Okay? So we would just go ahead and fill in the complementary bases, just replacing the U's in place of the T, okay? So, and again, it has the sugar phosphate backbone, right? It just, we're only making a single strand of RNA. So this would be our strand of RNA, right? Then this would get sent out to the cytoplasm, right? And then these two strands of DNA would then come back together into a single molecule of DNA, okay? So that's basically the process of transcription. Okay, so Again, transcription, it's very similar to DNA replication. If you're given one template, one coding side, right, one coding strand of DNA, you can figure out, based on these nitrogenous base pairings, which nucleotides are going to be in what order, right? You, can, you know the T's are going to bind with the A's, um, and the only thing you have to do is replace any T's with U's, okay? So this is our mRNA that would get sent out to the cytoplasm, to the ribosomes, okay? So... Quick problem. Okay, if this is, if we have two strands of DNA, okay, we're not given the second strand of DNA. Uh, if we're given one strand of DNA, K 
can you figure out its second strand? And then can you answer what is the mRNA sequence, right? If this, if strand two is the coding strand, okay, what would be the sequence of mRNA that it produces? Okay, so remember this coding strand is going to be the one that, remember I'll skip back up here, the coding strand is going to be the one that the mRNA uses as a template, okay? So this was its coding strand here, the mRNA used it as a template, okay? So, now would be a good time to pause. If you want to work on this problem, I'll wait a few seconds. Um, you can pause, and then I will uh, go ahead and uh, fill this out. Okay, so I'm going to assume you paused. So then let's work this, work through this. Okay, so you can, if you want, uh, what you can do is you can, okay, so if you know this is one strand, the second strand is going to be complement to that, right? So C's bind with G's, uh, G's bind with C's. These bind with G's, right? And we're still DNA, so we still use T's, right? Okay, so this would be the second strand. And if this is the second strand, and this is the coding strand, then the mRNA would be complementary to these, right? So the complement to the cytosine would be guanine, right? So we would have G, right? Our, our mRNA would be complement to the strands. Okay, so we know it's going to be, start with three G's, right? Okay, so it's not B, and it's not C, okay? And then we also know that in, in uh, RNA, we use uracil instead of, um, we're going to use uracil instead of T's, right? So here, where we would put in T's for DNA, we're going to put U's in, okay? So you can see that the answer is going to be C. Okay, so you'll notice that this R mRNA looks a lot like this strand of DNA, right? Because both are complementary to strand two, except the RNA is going to use uracil, use instead of T's, I mean, okay? So you can notice that the strand one, the, or the, the strand that is not coding, is going to look a lot like the mRNA, right? Because both the RNA and the strand, this other strand, are complementary to the coding strands. Okay? So hopefully that helped you think about this, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Alright, so the next video is going to be on translation. Okay? So we talked about DNA replication, and we talked about transcription, right? How do you make mRNA? But then once you send that mRNA out to the cytoplasm, to the ribosomes, how do you make proteins? Okay? So that's the next video. All right, thanks guys.